these five reptile keeping hacks might change your life. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And today I'm gonna give you five of my top reptile keeping hacks to make your life a little easier. So number one is to keep your old UVBs. So most UVBs are advertised these days to be changed once a year. A lot of them every six months, but some of them like the Arcadia T5HOs, which most of us use these days, are once a year. Now some UVBs like the Arcadias, actually will last more than a year, but you can't guarantee anything without a solar meter to be able to test it for sure. But usually after a year, they're still putting out a little something something. So when you replace them, it's nice to keep those old ones on hand just in case something ever goes wrong, your UVB burns out, something breaks, so that you have the backup bulb to swap back in so your animal doesn't have to go without UVB while you order a new bulb. Tip number two, and this is one that I use religiously because I really like using overhead heating. I prefer using halogen floodlights because it's like the most natural way to provide heat to your animal without taking them outside to like the actual sun. So it's like it's actually natural. So number two is to use plug-in dimmers because halogen floodlights can get pretty hot. They're really good for hitting those really high temperatures that some reptiles love. But plug-in dimmers are a great way to be able to control the output of that light and how much heat's coming out. So all you do is you plug it right in to your outlet, plug the lamp or whatever your light is in into the plug-in dimmer, and then you have a dimmer switch that you can use to control how bright your light is, so how much heat is coming out of your light. This is super helpful, especially with seasonal changes. If you're somewhere like I am in New York where we have decently warm summers and then freezing cold winters, we need to be able to adjust your reptile's heat. Rather than just completely replacing the whole bulb, I can just walk around and adjust those dimmers. This next tip is one that I learned for arid bioactive setups. Now, none of my enclosures right now are bioactive, I don't think. I kind of let them go a little bit, oops. Um, but when I was really on top of trying to keep them bioactive and getting them going and everything, the tip that I learned for arid bioactives, and this is a question I got a lot when I was setting up some of my arids, is how do you keep your isopods alive? And something I learned was overflow your water dishes. So obviously you don't want to completely saturate your whole enclosure and raise the humidity up a whole lot if you've got an arid species. So what we do is we just raise up the humidity and the moisture in that one area. So I would always overflow my water dishes. Underneath would be a little more wet than the rest of the enclosure. So the ice pods always had somewhere to go to. And this worked really well for several of my enclosures. Like my jeweled Lacerda enclosure, I had great isopods in there for the longest time because I'd overflow his water dish. So underneath his water dish would still be quite wet. So I'd lift up his water dish and there'd be tons of isopods. So just a little helpful tip that I've learned from other reptile keepers over the time. Number four, some of you probably already know this one, but if you don't, you can get free naturalistic decor. But what I mean by that is you can go out to the woods and get yourself moss, rocks, driftwood and sticks, like leaf litter. Like literally you can go out and get stuff for free to make your reptile enclosures look beautiful. Most of the sticks that I have came from outside. All of my rocks, minus like the red lava looking arid rocks I have for like my leopard gecko, came from outside. Leaf litter, who pays for leaf litter? I do, sometimes, usually just in the winter because I can't go out and dig under the snow to get leaves. But in the spring and in the fall, I'm usually loading up on leaf litter, bagging it up and storing it in the freezer or baking it or whatever, and then storing it in a just like gallon Ziploc bag. So whenever I need leaf litter, I can just go grab a gallon Ziploc baggie. Almost made it through the whole video without my camera dying. So where were we? Oh yes, if it's free, it's for me. And number five, this one helped me a ton when I had moved back into my parents' house during COVID and all of that. Um, so if you are someone that doesn't have a designated reptile room, maybe your reptiles live in your bedroom, like they do for most of us for many years, this one might save you. That is to set up a kitchen in your reptile room. And by kitchen, I just mean like a mini fridge. Like I had a little mini, mini, like 
think it was for makeup or like drinks or something. It was a tiny little fridge. It was blue, it matched my aesthetic. When I'd go to expos and get stickers from people, I'd put my stickers on it. But that's where I could keep my reptile greens, my mealworms if I didn't want them to change or if I wasn't breeding them, my Nutra grubs, my crusted gecko food. So I had it all right there in my room because it was getting to the point where I was getting frustrated, just annoyed with before work every morning, having to run downstairs, prep reptile salads, go back upstairs, feed them, go back downstairs sometimes to put things away, go back upstairs to finish getting ready for work. It was a lot of up and down, up and down. And honestly, my parents were probably sick of me having animal food in the fridge. Not probably, I knew they were sick of me having animal food in the fridge. So once I got my own little tiny fridge for animal food that I could put in my bedroom, it made such a difference. It, feeding and just animal chores went so much quicker. It was so much more convenient. Like it was a life changing thing. So I literally just got a little shoe rack. It's a metal shelving, a little shoe rack, two shelves, put the fridge on top. I had a little water dispenser, which actually I got right here, I can show you guys. A little dusty needs to be refilled, but just like this little water dispenser, fill it up, pop some Reptisafe in there, put it on the shelf. If I had water dishes that need to be topped off or refilled or whatever, I have to bring them over, hit the little tap so there was no walking down the hallway to the bathroom and back multiple times. I had this sucker right there, it was great. And then I had a little bin that had like my calcium and my vitamins and my bee pollen and like my rapaches and like all that other like assorted reptile food related things. And then of course my tong jars that I was making and putting in Etsy. I haven't done these in a while. It's on my to-do list, especially because I'm vending expos this fall finally after years. And I really wanna bring tong jars with me and get them back in the shop. Um, but so eventually you will see these back in the shop again. But my tong jar, so all of my tongs and everything. Right now I've got tongs and snake hook and everything, but my tong jar. So I literally had like a whole little kitchen in my bedroom, which just made my life so easy better organized. I wasn't having to run down the hallway or downstairs to the kitchen, like life changing. So those are some of my favorite reptile keeping hacks. If you can think of more, leave them in the comments below so we can all help each other out here. And as always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you for the next video. Bye.